Hi, Daniela, and hi, Andrea. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, tonight's event regarding uh, getting your foot in the door? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I'm Daniela. I'm the president of uh, the USA chapter of IABC. And today's uh, event is titled Job Seeking Practices, Getting Your Foot in the Door. And the purpose of this, the goal is really to get students to learn more about what it takes to uh, go job hunting, what it takes to perhaps speak to people about uh, getting a job. Fantastic. And how about you, Andrew? Or, and tell me what your th thoughts are on tonight's event. My name's Andrew Bennett, and I'm the vice president of programming and events for the USA. USC chapter of IBC. I'm really excited for the panel tonight. We have some great experts that are going to be talking to our um, participants about how to land that perfect uh, right. dream job in communications. So Excellent. I'm excited. Management Master's Program. And it is my pleasure to serve as the moderator of tonight's panel, where you will all learn how to get a job. Uh, My name is Stephanie Selesnik. I'm a, a president of a company called International Trade Information. We're based in Woodland Hills. We're an international consulting company, but for many, many years we ran trade shows. How many of you know what trade I'm shows Suzanne are? I'm Suzanne Alcantara from Annenberg's Career Development San Martin. I am the principal of Plan B Communications. Plan B is a retained executive recruiting practice that focuses on communications and marketing search. Uh, I have been in search for about six years. I started Plan B in October 2008, and prior to that, I spent about 20 years as a corporate communications and marketing professional. Cabrera, and I'm a communications project manager at Southern California Edison. Edison is one of the largest privately owned utilities in the country. Do you have any Southern California Edison customers here? I'm seeing now, and I found this very interesting because two years ago, I could not, I needed the jaws of life to extract someone from a job for a search that I was doing. I would hear, no, nope, not interested, no, nope, not a good time for me. Now, it's definitely, definitely loosening up. I finished a search. How many of you have done internships? Good. Yeah, interning is really the best way to find out if you like the company, what the industry is about, what are the ins and outs, what are the bewares, what are the, oh wow, that's really cool. There's a lot of that to be background. done. They see that you have a master's from a great school, and that'll take you far, but what'll set you apart above uh, your competition is that practical experience. What would you consider the best job-seeking strategies for new um, graduates in the field? Well, I think Susan and I were on the same wavelength, because I actually brought you three pages of professional organizations for common journalism. They're on the table there. But, um, that relates to this question. Certainly joining professional organizations, and to Susan's point, and I think Chris, I mean, that's where a lot of the jobs are that are really directly related to the industries you're interested in. Um, I think informational interview, well, let me back up for a second. I think meeting people and, you know, is the most important thing in the job search. People like to talk about themselves. It's a great kind of uh, uh, Graduates are looking for jobs. How should they be using social media? And perhaps more critically, how should they not be mm -hmm. using social Start media? Start a job hunt is Google yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Google it, Google yourself with your full name without your initial, with your initial, every possible way. Is you are, relatively speaking, social media experts. Like at our company, we have four different generations of people. They're you know, baby boomers, generation X, we have millennials, we have people that are called traditionalists. The traditionalists are, these are people that are ready to be you know, retirement age. And it's no surprise, they're not as familiar with computers and social media. So where that comes in is you can use that to your advantage when you're coming to a company and applying uh, to a company, you can show them that you know how to use these tools, you know how to uh, teach others how to use these tools, and you know how to use them for a business purpose. And what HARO is, are reporters across the country, all types of reporters, from, from television news to print, who are looking for experts in, uh, that they can talk with for their articles. And on occasion, I will, you know, when it's, you know, it's job search or career related, I will respond. Last week there was one about uh, someone looking for insight on college graduates and how would you suggest they, they take care of their job or start their job searches. So I, I responded and I said, well here, boom, boom, boom. My first thing, cleanse your Facebook and then I said a couple of other things. And the person wrote back to me, the head of the site wrote back and said, this is really great information. Instead of me interviewing you, would you just write an article? 
But the added aspect that I think is important in uh, the business world today is to be able to have a creative aspect to your writing. It's not enough to just have something that's just black and white, straightforward, straight and to the point. Website, do a little research on that and make it applicable. Don't just send out something you did in a class. Make it for them because a lot of other people competing with you won't think to do that. Mm -hmm. It was tweeted, it was put on LinkedIn, it was put on Facebook. Now, I wanted to share with all of you that the head of that site, um, and my contact information is on the sheet, the head of that site knew I was coming here to do this event tonight, and he said, we are a growing business community, but if any of the students that you talk with are interested in doing an unpaid internship, they look for interns all the time. I'm just sort of curious um, what your perspectives are on that, of, you know, how much to, you know, regulate what you have posted there, how much to show maybe your perspective. But anything that your grandparents would be bothered by, yes, get rid of Images them. have an extremely long half-life. Words, words don't carry that kind of impact. On the side of the receiver, you want to look at everything on your Facebook page, but particularly photographs, and say, how can somebody interpret this? So they're going to look at your photographs, whatever they are, and draw conclusions that may or may not be accurate. Different feedback on my resume from many people. Um, <laughs> contradictory, usually <laughs> very contradictory. So students my searches, but I saw missteps being taken with resumes so frequently that I actually took my time and I created a resume template that um, represented to me the, the greatest hits of all the resumes I've seen. And and how do you feel about like a, like a graphically designed PDF resume versus just a straight up Microsoft Word text and lines resume versus like resume website? I would say to anyone, no photos, absolutely no photos, no stylized um, writing of your name because the resume very often has to go through an applicant tracking system. So highly, highly stylized resumes could end up getting stuck. And be short, be topical, simple words, get your point across. You guys are communicators. Less is more. Actually take a look at the company websites. Get familiar with it. Find out how you can help them. You know, it's still it's still a crappy economy, and even though it's going up, and because you're in an in an area that's not necessarily generating revenue like sales, you need to either be showing them how they're going to get more revenue hiring you, or save money hiring you. So it's in that opening paragraph, and it doesn't have to be long. Three or four very very powerful sentences. I just have a lot of things that I've done so far. I know I'm quite young, but still, it's really hard to confine it to one page. So there's LinkedIn groups and people post questions, answer the questions. Start being looked at as somebody not just posing questions but actually contributing to the conversation. So that somebody can track following you. industry people on LinkedIn you can be posting industry articles, you know, just it's partly to demonstrate and sort of brand that you are following the trends in the industry. I have found candidates on LinkedIn. Someone actually who I placed a few years ago was here speaking here I think last night. So it's hard to keep up with the industry, but there are several industry gurus that talk about, in their podcasts, on a weekly basis, on a regular basis, a lot of uh, the trends, and it's a good way to keep up with uh, what's I going on. I was wondering that if I just choose several of them, but make more list. And then you could list in the sentence, also worked in the entertainment industry, the insurance industry, so you're accounting for all of your time but you don't have to use up all of the space to explain what you did if it's not pertinent to the job that you're looking There are 96 consulates and trade commissions of foreign governments in the Southern California. He was talking a few months ago and I said, where do you see growth? And he said, Latin America and Asia are booming. He said, if candidates from American schools can maneuver, understand the culture, and, and bring that perspective to American-based companies, they are going to be very, very much in demand. But I've never been able to leverage that in applying anywhere because it's not something I know how to put into a translate. Resume. And you don't want to be an interpreter, but ability to translate concepts into like concepts, ability to communicate between the two and bridge the cultures. Those kinds of things you want to put in as things that you can do mm -hmm. that other people can't. Besides
Besides just the language. Are, uh, you, know, you speak several languages, but it's likely that you also know the cultures of those languages. So you can come to a company and say, not only do I speak those languages, but I know these cultures, and I know you're a company that looks for people that are aware of cultural diversity, and you can sell that as, uh, as an advantage that you bring. Introduce yourself as a multilingual communications professional. And, and also focus on the research, the, the, the benefit of research. So if you have a target company that you want to work for, look at their press releases, learn where their business is growing, and in the a little bit of an edge for a, a generalist communicator right now, but it's also willingness to roll up your sleeves and, and do whatever needs to get done. I think it's Own it, speak, do not go in groups, and never, ever, ever, if you attend one of the conferences, for example, never sit with people you know, ever. When you're looking for a job, you want to have as many different options out there so that if one doesn't turn out, it doesn't matter. you got three more interviews that are possible. Be discouraged if things don't happen as quickly as you would like them to happen. Um, a job search for, for anyone at any point in their career is a commitment. Look at where you 